सो हेलो माई डियर एक्सपीरियंस नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट वन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर योर एग्जामिनेशन दैट इज स्टेप्स इन इम्प्लांट प्लेसमेंट सो एक्सपीरियंट इन दिस टॉपिक यू मे गेट द क्वेश्चन लाइक इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन ऑफ डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ इम्प्लांट और लाइक दैट सेकेंड यू मे केम अक्रॉस टू द केस बेस्ड क्वेश्चन दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैव डन द इम्प्लांट प्लेसमेंट वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट प्रोसीजर और सम सिंगल बेस्ड क्वेश्चन लाइक हाउ यू विल प्लेस द इम्प्लांट विथ विच इंस्ट्रूमेंट यू आर गोइंग टू प्लेस इम्प्लांट एंड ऑल दी वैल्यू बेस्ड क्वेश्चन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट सो लेट्स सी फर्स्ट सिंपल बेसिक थिंग और वॉट इज इम्प्लांट डिजाइन सो यू कैन सी एस प्रेन दिस इज अ बायोसिल इट इज नॉर्मली एस शेप then you have a pitch which can be 0.8 mm or 0.9 mm then you have a bevel which is considered as a micro groove and at the same time you have the cutting edge at the end at the apex of the implant so you can see this flat area is your cutting edge so there is the importance of each component remember the pitch determines the surface area available for load transfer to the peri implant tissue and this cutting edge will provide a pical anchorage which is responsible for the primary stability of the implant so whenever you focus on the implant design two things are very important pitch of the implant and cutting edge of the implant now comes the steps and armamentarium included in implant placement so first thing is case selection very important you have to check the patient bone level patient immune status and anatomical factors that where is your sinus located where is your inferior nerve canal is there nasopharyngeal canal how much bone that all you have to see and based on that you can focus on case selection then experience the first thing comes the bone classification what type of bone you have so this indicates the bone density d1 to d5 d1 is the highest and d5 is the lowest i always say whenever you study such classification remember two important value the highest that is 1250 and the lowest that is 150 so d1 is more than 1250 hounds per unit so here is the dense cortical bone d2 is 850 to 1250 hounds per unit here the thick dense to porous cortical bone on crest and coarse tubular bone within then d3 we have a 350 to 850 hounds per unit it is a thin porous cortical bone on crest and fine tubular bone within then d4 is a fine tubular kind of bone and d5 is a immature non mineralized bone now let's compare this bone density first with the tactile analog so what is tactile analog when you place the implant when you check the bone you have a tactile perception that is only tactile analog which is also known as clinical perception of bone so in d1 kind of bone you have oak or maple kind of tactile in d2 white pin or spruce kind d3 is a balsa wood and d4 is a styrofoam Now where all these implants located? D1 is located in the anterior mandible, D2 in the anterior and posterior mandible and anterior maxilla, D3 in posterior mandible, anterior and posterior maxilla, and D4 purely on the posterior maxilla. Then let's see the division of the available bone. The resorption pattern given by the Misch and Zuri. Very important classification. So as you know, the bone, the edentulous area undergo resorption. So we can have a this six type of category. The first, you can see this is the abundant bone. This is adequate bone height. but reduce bone width remember whenever the bone get resolved the first thing the width get reduced followed by the height here the bone width is reduced but you require a grafting here there is a advanced bone width reduction and here you can see advanced bone height reduction and this is atrophied bone so please as per remember this six division of bone in exam they may ask you any bone and they can tell the classification or give the important characteristics of the bone then comes the local anesthesia most often when you go for the big surgical procedure maybe disinfection or surgery we focus to give the block but in implant placement block is avoided give infiltration that infiltration will provide local hemostasis and there will be pain if you reach any vital structure imagine you are placing a implant on posterior mandible you have given just local infiltration what happened when you reach any vital structure maybe in fall will now the patient will have pain you will get notice yes i am reaching the vital structure that's why in implant placement block is avoided and infiltration is given 
Let's come to the step three. There's an incisional flap design, which play a very important role in the success of implant. So we have around six to seven kind of flap design, and each is important for image based question and also when you have to uh, use which design. So this is a punch approach. You can see as plan this round mark. This is a punch approach. It is done when the tissue quality is very good. Like you have a two to three mm of attached and keratinized gingiva. You can go for this punch approach with the help of blade or a punch tool or a punch drill. For accuracy, you can use the surgical guide and a planning software. Then this is half punch approach. You can see the half round. It is done when the buccal tissue is deficient aspirant. So just what you have to do, you have to create a mid crystal incision and reflect a full thickness flap. And then use a punch approach to remove only enough lingual or parietal tissue to place an implant. It is appropriate for a one stitch procedure with possible grafting. Then you have the simple mid crestal incision. It is made in the middle of the crest with intracircular on the adjacent teeth. Full thickness buccal and lingual flaps are reflected. Can be used for one or two test procedure with grafting or we can say you can go for grafting afterward also. So simple to remember aspirant for you can go for punch approach this is a half punch approach and it is a mid crystal approach let's see other design it is a palatal or lingual crystal it is a very common sense to understand you're going for the palatal flap why because the buccal tissue is very deficient okay so this crystal incision require a grafting and it can be used for both one or a two stage procedure then this is very interesting it's a mesial papilla preservation it is done by using a vertical releasing incision connected to the crystal incision okay and it is done to for two taste placement and uncovering the maximum aesthetic by not losing the more important mesial papilla then the same way distal incision that is a distal papilla preservation flap here the vertical incision is also connected to the crystal incision and it allows for a preparatory bone grafting procedure then this is very simple double papilla preservation here both the mesial as well as distal papilla are preserved with two vertical incision connecting your crystal incision you can use it for a two stage approach and for uncovering to mobilize good tissue quality to the buckle so these are around seven different kind of flap designs you have used during implant placement then comes stage four that is a sequential odontomy so as we learn where you go for sequential odontomy to decrease rise in temperature during the osteotomy procedure and it is done using physio dispensing in 20 is to one hand piece under copious irrigation and osteotomy drills so now we are going to see this step five that is implant placement so aspirant we have three kind of implant loading very important question there's an immediate zero to 48 hours after surgery early that is 48 hours to three months after surgery and delayed that is after three months please note this important implant loading classification now implant placement so this picture is from the Medina's book of implantology. So implant placement you can done using implant driver. So these are your implant driver, very important image based question. Then implant is covered with a cover screw like this, which is with the help of hex driver. So as been two important things you have seen here. This is the implant driver and this is the hex driver and whatever driver it is, maybe hex or implant driver, it can be hand operated or ratchet operated or handpiece that is machine operated then comes the next step that is final tightening of implant you can done using a torque ratchet to get adequate torque and implant stability so we have two kinds of uh, torque ratchet here the different values of the torque are there that is 0 15 25 35 and 50 but in this kind of torque ratchet the value of the torque is fixed so please know the difference between these two kind of torque ratchet then comes the flap closure and suture then you have to wait for three months if you are going for the two-stage surgery then after three months come the second stage surgery there is placement of healing cap healing abutment gingival former or the impression post then how many weeks you have to wait for the gingival to form it is around 15 to 21 days that is two to three weeks you have to wait for gingiva formation then comes a very important step that is impression making so which impression material to choose the ideal material is polyvinyl siloxane why 
minor bone toxicity, very stable and multiple viscosity available. Then why not polysulfide because it is toxic to bone, yeah it is stable but slow set and unpleasant taste to patient. Why not polyether because toxic to bone, very rigid and hydrophilic. And why not other hydrochloids because they are least stable, very poor tear strength and least desirable to use due to limitation of materials. So the best impression material to choose for implant depression is your polyvinyl siloxane. Now let's see how to make an impression for implant processes. You can see this diagram, it is implant level impression. Then you can see this abutment, there is abutment level impression. So in this we have two techniques that is a pickup open tray and transfer type or direct and indirect technique. So in exam if they ask you this uh, diagram and tell you which impression you have to go for, you can go for either impression, so pickup or transfer type. The same lies for this image based question also. Then experience comes the next step that is a type of tray. So open tray, it is very important for multi-unit impression and in case with the implant or abutment angulation and path of insertion withdrawal okay and it is less accurate for multi-unit cases and this closed tray is less accurate for multi-unit impression we will see in next slide what is the multi-unit impression and multi-unit cases so as friend this is the open tray technique so here you can see it's a multi-unit impressions okay so the open tray or pickup technique is required when implants are not parallel and path of insertion is divergent if you use closed tray impression post i.e in this situation it may prevent removal of the impression tray from inside the patient mouth so let's see the all six steps of open tray technique the first is removing the healing abutment from the implant and immediately replace it with an open tray coping second hand tighten the guide pin and work from most posterior abutment and verify with the pa that each coping is fully engaged so as you can see here the coping is fully engaged and here it is not engaged and in step 3 you have to inject the preferred syringe material around each impression post and you have to fill the tray with monophase or medium body and record the impression now what to do after the impression set you have to remove each guide pin and ensure all guide pin are completely disengaged before removing from patient mouth step 5 to avoid soft tissue collapse on the impression immediately replace the healing abutment on all the implants before continuing then you have to place the guide pin into the impression and you have to send the case to laboratory. That's the open tray technique for multi-unit impression. Let's see closed tray. There's an indirect procedure. So here the screw indirect transfers onto the implant with the 1.25 mmd hex tool. And the fixture amount of transfer can also be used. And for a closed tray impression, retaining screw are used that match the height of the transfer. Then you have to block the holes on top of the screw with a wax or suitable material to prevent impression material from entering. After that you have to record the impression, you can use either a late or medium body impression material around transfer and record a full arch impression with a medium body material. Then you have to unscrew each transfer from the implant body using that hex tool and attach the appropriate implant replica with the same retaining screw and place the, tra place the transfer bag into the impression material with the replica attached and then you have to send this impression to the lab. So in this way the open and close tray technique are performed. Then comes the step 9 and 10 that is you have to send to the laboratory and process is delivery. So you have to cement your crown to the implant with the help of the best cement available in the market that is resin modified dual cure cement. Okay aspirant, now let's see a few important values, many books you see many values, but this is the value from Carl and Mish you have to follow for your examination. So what is the minimum thickness of buccal or facial and lingual or palatal bone around implant? It's a 1 mm. Minimum interimplant distance 3 mm. Minimum distance from adjacent tooth it's a 1.5 mm. Safe zone below maxillary sinus it is 1 mm. Safety margin for mandibular canal 2 mm and safety margin for anterior loop is 5 to 6 mm. Okay, experience. So that was all regarding all the steps of your implant placement.